G'day everyone and welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the rookie draft and the preseason draft and all the category B sort of signings that we saw yesterday. Uh, I'm a little bit late with this particular update simply because I had other things going on. But the purposes of this video today is to kind of just cover what's happened uh, because there was uh, you know a number of selections for various clubs and I'll sort of go through each selection and talk about, uh, about the player if I know who they are. But the, to be honest, the rookie draft is very, very speculative and it's a few new names that I wasn't even aware of. So we'll just go through what happened as a bit of a review. So uh, broadly speaking, for anyone who is not fully across how the draft system works, uh, obviously the last two days were the national draft, Monday and Tuesday, where um, all the best 18-year-olds obviously get drafted to main lists, the, the senior list on an AFL club. By contrast, today's rookie draft is a, actually goes onto a separate list. I've mentioned this before, but uh, over time, the purpose of the rookie draft has become a little bit blurred. Uh, it used to be a, a separate list, and, and therefore, the players who were on the rookie list couldn't play AFL games unless they were sort of upgraded mid-season to replace an injured player, which is no longer the case. Rookies can all play, and so the, the only real benefit to having a rookie list now is that I think a portion of their salary gets paid outside the salary cap. Or if they're a new rookie and they're on the base of say 80 grand, all of that is separate to the uh, salary cap, but any rookie that's paid more than that, the difference of that goes into the salary cap, if that makes sense. So what we see now is that the way that the rookie list is used has changed. It used to be, you know, clubs would take as many as six rookie picks and there would be speculative talents all over the country. And uh, now it's used a lot for just re-signing players for salary cap reasons, um, but we'll get into that. What we also saw today was some category B signings. So the rules under that are where, you know, academy players or even father sons, if they don't get taken or bid on during the national draft, clubs can sign them directly as category B rookies. And we saw four of those happen on Wednesday. Then there's also the preseason draft. So let's go into each draft one by one. So firstly, I'll, I'll start with the preseason draft. We had three selections. So to distinguish the preseason draft from the rookie draft and the national draft, the preseason draft does go onto the main list. And we had three players uh, drafted and two of them went to their own clubs, which I found kind of confusing. So back in the day when the preseason draft was actually a thing or more like prevalent, the purpose of it was for players who uh, had been delisted could get drafted by other clubs um, if they hadn't uh, nominated for the national draft, which was still in the, within their rights. The difference between the national and the preseason draft from a player perspective is my understanding is in the national draft, if you get drafted, you, um, you are signed on a two-year base contract that uh, is, say, $100,000. With the preseason draft, unless it's changed, this is the only place where you can set your own salary expectation and clubs will draft you knowing that they have to adhere to that contract. Has that rule changed? I am not too sure. Uh, but the other thing that's kind of made it obsolete is the delisted free agency process. That's only happened in the last five to 10 years or so. And if a player gets delisted, clubs can sign them directly. That wasn't a thing before. And so the preseason draft would be a good mechanism to get those players onto your list. Where it's also been handy in the past is when clubs are negotiating a trade for a player that's out of contract. And if the two teams don't come to a resolution in terms of a uh, trade, then the player would go into the preseason draft in theory and could be drafted by any club. We did see that back in like, I don't know, 2004, Nick Stevens. Uh, I think he went from Port Adelaide to Carlton. The two clubs couldn't negotiate a trade and uh, he got drafted in the preseason draft to Carlton, I think was the second club. We have also seen players nominate for the national draft having not uh, had a trade result. And that was uh, the Luke Ball example when he left St Kilda to join Collingwood. So it's all very muddled up, but um, I'll stop banging on about it and tell you exactly what happened. So Hawthorne redrafted Chad Wingard, not on the rookie list, which is where I thought it was previously reported, but onto their own senior list again through the preseason draft. Sam Day joined Gold Coast in the exact same way. The only one that was used in the traditional way was Riley Bonner. Instead of signing as a delisted free agent, he went into the preseason draft and St Kilda drafted him. Uh, so I don't know why that is the case, to be honest. He could just sign as a, a delisted free agent. So... Um, if anyone knows, let me know in the comments because the rules around this get blurred and they're not always public. Um, but either way, Riley Bonner has found a new club in St Kilda and that kind of caps off their off season of um, adding a lot of leg speed and you know, particularly out of the back half too. The reason why this uh, Chad Wingard and da Sam Day examples are weird were I thought they would get re-rookied and the benefit of that is like 100 grand off their salary goes um, outside of the salary cap. But they've just re-signed onto their own main list where they already were. 
And neither club had to make any more list changes because there's a minimum requirement for list changes. Both of those clubs took like four or five picks each. So Chen Wigard and Sam Day have just rejoined their own same club's main list um, when they could have simply just signed a contract extension. The only thing I can think is if Hawthorne and Gold Coast kept their options open and uh, decided that, you know, that potentially if Hawthorne found six players in the national draft, that would take up a main list spot and then Wingard would have to be redrafted as a rookie. And they've done that again with Cooper Stevens, which we'll get to later. But Cooper Stevens was taken as a rookie. Chad Wingard is on their main list. And it's unclear why. But anyway, we'll move on. Before I talk about the rookie draft itself, let's talk about the Category B signing players. There was four that joined their respective clubs. The first one was Indy Kirk, son of Brett Kirk, who uh, I think is both part of the academy and a father-son for Sydney. And uh, I think he's an overager, meaning he's, he's 19. So I think he didn't get drafted last year. He's about 181 centimeters uh, as a midfielder and uh, has been now added to Sydney's Cat B uh, list, which again, outside of the uh, main list, outside of the rookie list, and I presume outside of the salary cap as well. So it's like a third list. West Coast signed Cohen Livingston. Again, this is uh, under the same rule as, as Indy Kirk, where he's a next generation academy talent that didn't get drafted at all. And West Coast decided to offer him a contract, but uh, decided against um, Oscar Hein Baston, which was one that I thought was going to happen, to be honest. Uh, then we had Brisbane with their Brisbane Academy or Queensland Brisbane Academy. Uh, they assigned Bruce Revel, who is a 185 centimeter sort of versatile utility, 22 years old. He's been in the Lions Academy for a while, and I believe he performed well in the VFL enough to get drafted. And then Nathan Wardius joined GWS for another uh, Giants Academy player. Another player who's overage, he's 19, but stayed in the academy, uh, I suppose, and is 181 centimeters and a small forward. So those all join a Cat B list. So we're finally to the actual rookie list. And again, we've got a mix here of young 18 year old draftees and then players that have been redrafted by their club. So let's just go through them all. West Coast had pick one and took Locke Rawlinson, a small forward out of South Australia, apparently a midfield convert and, um, and potentially like another Noah Long. Obviously that's best case scenario, but uh, stylistically similar sort of story. Um, Rawlinson joins West Coast. With pick two, North Melbourne took uh, Finbar Maley and uh, he's a 197 centimeter sort of tall utility. I think he's like a ruck forward. Um, the interesting thing I'll say as an aside is the amount of players that we thought would get drafted in the national draft, they didn't show up in this rookie draft. And that's something I've noticed over the years. The rookie draft, the approach to it really is different. It's not so much about plucking the best players who didn't get drafted. It's kind of used to get real speculative talents. And for instance, yeah, Finbar Maley, I had not heard that name come across any sort of draft talk up to this point. But congratulations, Finbar. With pick three, uh, Hawthorne then re-rookied Cooper Stevens. Uh, again, it's unclear why Wingard went pre-season, but Stevens went rookie. I suppose that's down to list spots. But again, I've already made my thoughts clear on that. Then Gold Coast used the uh, pick four to draft Sam Closey, a, another player out of the VFL. He actually won the VFL's like most promising young talent award. And he was another one, uh, I think he was at Werribee, that Michael Barlow, along with Sean, uh, Manor, Sean Manor, said that they should get drafted. And now Gold Coast have thrown him a chance. He's a 21-year-old inside mid, I think, and he's 189 centimeters. So congrats to him. Fremantle then uh, took the punt on a guy called Odin Jones. He is a 199 centimeter ruck forward again from uh, the under 18s waffle competition. And uh, again, a little bit of an interesting one. Like I didn't know if a ruck would really be on their agenda. They did draft Trent Noble last year, who looks like a good prospect. Maybe it's specifically the balance of Ford and ruck. But again, with, uh, with rookie list selections, they're all kind of speculative. So list balance doesn't really, <clears throat> doesn't really matter. At pick eight, Geelong had the first example in this rookie draft specifically of drafting a player who played for a different club. And that was Emerson Jecker, who was on Hawthorne's list for a couple of years, played seven games, but he's 198 centimeter key forward. So again, they sort of balance out their draft hands, um, having taken a key back, a ruck, a key forward, and then some uh, quite a few mature types as well, which has been a common thread for them this off season. Essendon took Dante Vicente's brother, sorry, Vicentini, Dante Vicentini's brother. Dante Vicentini plays for Port Adelaide and they drafted his younger brother, uh, Vigo, who was a 204 centimeter ruckman, sort of like his brother. So Essendon at a young ruck. Then we had a glut of teams, uh, Adelaide, the Bulldogs, Sydney, and Melbourne draft, redraft their own players and re-rookie them. Will Hamill, Lockie McNeil, Sam Reed, and Jake Melksham. For those wondering, there is nothing stopping any other club from drafting those players in the rookie draft. There is no rule or mechanism stopping that. So clubs do run the risk of other clubs drafting their players. 
it's just not something you see because probably it's a bit of a dick move and clubs generally don't screw each other over in that overt sense. But there is no rule stopping it. So it could happen, one day it will, and eventually the clubs will stop using the bookie list in this particular way. But it's one of those things where if you screw over you know, opposing team, then you yourselves as a club probably can't use the rookie list in the same strategic way anymore because it will stop everyone using it that way. Port Adelaide then uh, took a 195 centimeter 18 uh, year old prospect in Xavier Welsh. This kid is considered to have a lot of upside out of WA. And uh, I think he missed a bit of footy this year with injury and suspension, but it's considered pretty talented. So Port Adelaide get a good speculative one there. That's where GWS re-signed Adam Kennedy as a rookie. And then Matt Carroll, he's another genuine draftee hopeful. He is one that I thought would go in the national draft and was linked to Carlton. He's like a sort of intercepting defender with um, with skills and he's good overhead. So uh, Carlton add that to, uh, who is it, Billy Wilson, I think they got in the second round of this year's draft. So a bit of run and carry out of the back half for Carlton this offseason. Gold Coast then drafted a guy called Will Rollins. Uh, who I think is another 18-year-old prospect. He's a small midfielder forward, he's described as. So even though he's quite on the small side, they've described him more as a midfielder. He's good at stoppages. And uh, he also played for, I think, the Northern Territory team in the Coates Talent League, but he's South Australian. So a bit of a connection there, I guess. Adelaide then redrafted James Borlais, their own key defender who uh, was delisted and re-rookied after four games at the highest level. And Taylor Zureo was also re-rookied by the Western Bulldogs. So you can see a common thread here, like almost half the draft is clubs redrafting their own players. Melbourne then uh, rookie listed their own father-son prospect in uh, Keenan Brown or Kynan Brown, I'm not sure. But he's a 181 centimeter midfielder who actually did have a good championships at uh, for Vic Metro in the, this year's um, competition. I just realized for the first time, it's Nathan Brown's son. And uh, I remember Nathan Brown playing when I uh, was a kid and uh, that has just gotten very real for me. Happy 30th birthday to me, I guess. And then finally, Gold Coast actually took a punt on a delistee in Jack Marnie from North Melbourne. Uh, they've given him a second chance. Again, that was probably one that they could have uh, signed as a delisted free agent, but the benefit of the rookie list is that it doesn't take up a main list spot. So that makes sense. So I hope for those who are casually aware of the rules, I haven't made this video too confusing. I've tried to explain in real time what uh, is actually happening and what the general rules are or what I understand the rules are to be, but they do change. And like I said, they don't always get broadcast. You kind of learn them on the fly if you're watching the draft um, intently from a distance. So that's uh, the, uh, what happened in the rookie draft and preseason draft and cap B signings. This actually isn't the end of the period where clubs can sign new players. Anyone with a main list spot Remember I said there's two uh, lists in the AFL. You've got your main list and you have your rookie list. Oh, you've actually got your cat B list as well. But you can actually sign um, train on players. So you can, this preseason, any clubs with a uh, main list spot, I think Collingwood have one. I think West Coast have one. And off the top of my head, I think that's all I know for sure. But if somebody uh, trains with you over the preseason, you can just sign them to your list as a SSP, which is a supplemental something player. Um, so that's the benefit of doing that. I think Fremantle are going to do that with Jeremy Sharp. West Coast, uh, just to use an exa Eagles example because I remember it, pretty sure that's how they signed Jermaine Jones. They didn't draft him. He was signed as a uh, supplemental player. So that is not the end of the, where, how you can sign new players, but we're 99.8% there. So there you go, guys. That is all the drafts that will be taking place anyway. can guarantee on that. Um, I've got a couple of videos, uh, again, still reviewing what's happened. Um, I'm still, you know, got to make my Eagles video. It's just been a little bit busy at the moment and uh, a couple of ideas as well. But I do want to say thank you very much. I think the last 48 hours has probably been, I think statistically, the best 48 hours this channel has ever seen. So thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, I hope that the content I've made has added something to your life uh, in any way. Not just now, but, um, you know, over the stretch. So thank you very much for your support. And uh, for now, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Cheers.